and also a deputy speaker. I am not going to take a lot of time introducing Obama Masondo because I think we all know who he is. But very briefly, uh, Obama Masondo grew up in the struggle. He was born in what is called today KwaZulu Natal. It was called Northern Natal during those days. He was born there. He came with his family, uh, his parents to Johannesburg. Yeah, come and join us. And uh, became a student at our alma mater, Sekanontwana High School in the 70s. And that is where he started interacting with Ubabu Castro Mayatu, with many, many other young people during those days. The struggle credentials of Ubaba Masondo are known to everybody. As I say, he is the chairperson of the NCOP today. And he paid a lot of price, if I may put it that way. He paid a lot of price because he was involved in the struggle. He went to Robben Island, spent six years on Robben Island, but came out very convinced that he was going to contribute to a new democracy, to a new South Africa, which he did. He found himself in positions of influence. The longest, I think he's the longest mayor of Johannesburg that we have had in the history of our democracy. He spent about 10 years as the mayor uh, of Johannesburg. So without much ado, today really belongs to Ubabu Masondo. We want to listen to you, sir. We want to get advice from you. We want to listen to perspectives of what you see as the journey that we've made as far as human rights are concerned in South Africa and what the role of the NCOP is in that journey. And I'm sure you've got a lot that you would like to contribute to us. Without much ado, it's my privilege and singular honor to invite Baba Masondo to address us. Baba Masondo, over to you. Uh, my, true, my, my true love family, uh, chairperson of the board of the Castro and, and Monica, uh, my Tula Foundation, uh, Mr. Douglas uh, Ramaphosa, members of the board, uh, neighbors and, 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 and friends, ladies and gentlemen. The challenges, the challenges that face South Africa today are well documented. These range from an economy that has not been growing, unemployment, inequality, poverty, corruption and crime, as well as the devast devastating impact of the COVID-19 pan pandemic on lives and livelihood. Why do we need strong organization and, and leadership? This is a critical question to pose, given the fact that in the current period, one has seen the establishment of a few foundations meant to do good and advance 
positive values. <laughs> Amongst these are the following. The Begim Langen Foundation, the Habesi Musongutu Foundation, Nelson Mandela Foundation, Ahmed Katrada Foundation, Tabo Mbegi Foundation, the Halima Mutante Foundation, amongst others. These are interventions meant to add momentum to the ongoing efforts to improve the quality of life of people. Organizations are meant to act as instruments to effect change and ensure development. Organizations are also meant to provide credible leadership that is committed to fighting corruption, to build on our own sense of what is right and wrong, to understand that following the, the fight against colonial and, in, and imperialist oppression and repression in the past, which were relatively easier than the post-independence uh, 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 struggles, that a persistent, a persistent struggle should now be waged against the internal enemy of looters within and outside of the ranks of the liberation movement. What society are we striving to build? We seek to build a, a national democratic society. Just as a reminder that democratic South Africa is founded on uh, the values of human dignity, the achievement of uh, equality, and the advancement of human rights and freedoms on non-racialism non and, and non-sexism, supremacy of, of the constitution and the rule of law, on universal adult suffrage, a national common voters role, regular elections, and a multi-party system of democratic government to ensure accountability, responsiveness, and openness. On the brief history and, and human rights, the late Reverend uh, Mayatuma was born in 1921, as the chairperson has indicated, and was the only chair of the late uh, Mr. Joel and Mr. Mrs. Mamiya Mayatula. He was born and bred in the Kamuka, a small rural village of Willow Vale in the Eastern Cape, formerly known as the, as the, as the, as the, as the Trans Sky. Reverend Matula earned the name Castro as a result of his fearlessness, his eloquence, and military spirit of Fidel Castro, the former and late leader of Cuba. He always emphasized that he, he used the concept, the church role in the liberation struggle. It was this blend of missionary zeal uh, and total commitment to the liberation of black people, including <clears throat> the so-called colors and Indians that gained him the respect. He was first detained in 1974 during the Viva Frenimo rally meant to celebrate the independence of Mozambique. He was also subsequently detained after the banning of black organizations in 1977 and spent over a year in Mother B prison. He was one of the founders and interim president of the Black People's Convention, the BPC. He was also the founder member of both the South African student organization, SASO, and the Soweto Committee of TED, which was chaired uh, by the late uh, Dr. Ntato Motlan. <laughs> Reverend Maltura was also president of the African Independent Churches Association, AICA, which promoted uh, black theology and preached the Christian doctrine as envisaged by the independent uh, churches. Of course, he refused to, to adhere to any dogma. Most of his close as, 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 as associates remember him as the man who had a vision of a, a, a black messiah. 
He also served as a board member of the now defunct newspaper, The Voice, uh, on education and political activism. Uh, Rev Reverend Mayatula received his prim primary <coughs> and second secondary education in his rural village of Hamcha uh, and town of Willow Vale, uh, respectively. At a very young age, Reverend Mayatula became aware of the injustices perpetuated by the update regime, including his experiences, especially uh, in underdeveloped rural areas, where there were, amongst other challenges and problems, no decent uh, jobs. Whilst at college, he was elected chairperson of Sasso branch at the Mapumulo Theological Seminary. Uh, amongst others, he interacted with the, the chairperson of Sasso, a branch at Tefluop, uh, Comrade and uh, or, or and others who are later to become no, uh, 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 played a major role in mobilizing yeah. student solidarity. And the young leaders from various universities where Sasso had a footprint. After a graduation ceremony at Chef uh, Lop University in 1972, Reverend also hosted many young leaders and activists following the speech when representing the student graduates at this uh, graduation ceremony, you uh, had attacked the inferior and uh, oppressive system of Bantu education. Hero's speech also led to the closing of Tafelop University, and this was one of the first of its kind in the history of African or so-called uh, uh, Bush uh, universities. At another event over the weekend of the 20th and the 21st of, of January 1971, as SASO students and leaders, including Reverend Matula, attended uh, a consultative meeting uh, at, the, at the GOCC Hall in Orlando East. This meeting was organized by ASECA and some black leaders to form a cultural organization. It was at this meeting that the SASO leadership argued and convinced the various delegations that there was a, a political vacuum created by the burning of the African National Congress, the ANC, and the Pan-African Congress, the PAC, on the 30th of April, 1960. SASO leadership argued that there was no need to form some amorphous uh, apologetic cultural organization, uh, organizations. They maintain that the People's Liberation Movement was in existence uh, and in exile, and this had to be, to be respected. Many of these students felt that there was a need to establish a black political organization inside the country. As a result, the Black People's Convention, PPC, was formally constituted. Reverend Mayatula was then elected as the interim and founding uh, president uh, of the of, of PPC with two legacies as his uh, deputy president. Reverend Matula was succeeded by Mrs. Huari, the wife of Professor Huari of Teflop. Mrs. Huari was in turn uh, succeeded by Dr. Senwani uh, Farisan, former speaker of the Limpopo Provincial Legislature and thereafter by Kenneth uh, Rachidi, who was the last president of PPC when it was banned together with 19 other organiza organizations, including the Christian Institute, which was led by the late Dr. Bears Nodier in October, 1977. Reverend Mayatula worked very clo closely with uh, the freedom fighters, such as uh, the late uh, Stephen Bantubiko, Professor Bani Pichane, Tom Mantata, Bishop Malusi Mpumluane, 
Mr. Dr. Dr. Mampila Ram, Ram, Rampila, the late Dr. Bear Snow there, late Mapetla Mahapi, Peter Jones, Arch Archbishop Desmond Dudu, the now late uh, Dre Koga, the late uh, Dr. Aubrey Mukwape, uh, Aubrey and Malimukwena, Professor Seth Cooper, the current uh, uh, President Sir Ramaphosa, uh, the late uh, uh, Dr. Stephen Moodley, Sadiq Variava, the late Stephen Indwasa, Justice Muloto, the late uh, After detention, Reverend Mayatula joined the African National Congress and got involved uh, in underground activities. Reverend Mayatula and some of the above mentioned former detainees were the founder members of the Soweto Committee of 10, led by, as indicated earlier on, by the now the late Dr. Ntato Mozan. Reverend Natula also influenced and worked very closely with many younger political activists of the time. And amongst, and, and amongst these, I included individuals such as Pinyose Basetla, Popo Mulife, Chabu Wenya, Baby Chawa, Archie Whitehead, Super Muloi, Douglas Ramaphosa, Dr. Tabo uh, Mukuba, uh, the late Zuelisi uh, Zane, Mefi Murube, and many others. As we all know, Reverend Matula passed on uh, in 1980, uh, and, and as we know, a very young priest uh, at the end, and a Reverend uh, Frank Chekana presided over the funeral service at the Mundi in, in Soweto. The family was uh, grateful when they received, amongst others, many messages of condolences, a, a, a special uh, a telegram and or letter from the then president of the African National Congress uh, at the time, Oliver Reginald Tambo, uh, 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 worker in relation to the church, Reverend Matula's family home in Nawana Soweto, became a church site and, and when the church grew, the congregation moved to a, a school. This being a, a general uh, experience uh, to, 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 to worship in general, the National Park uh, then uh, was not keen to provide church, church sites for indigenous African independent churches, as we know, including Amazayoni, uh, Zion, and apostolic, ch apostolic churches. Most of these still worship in, in schools, homes, and community halls, even today as we speak. In the main, those that managed to acquire church sites were, the main, were part of the mainstream stream, uh, uh, that are of European, American, or similar uh, origins. Like many South Africans, Reverend Mayatula was, was to experience oppression and discrimination by the apartheid system inside and outside of the church. This propelled him more to fight for justice, equality, freedom, and democracy. <laughs> Named a uh, uh, fiery priest, Reverend, Reverend Mayatula played very hard for the end of the apartheid system. Most importantly, fought for the well being of the underprivileged. Uh, Black people in general and Africans in particular. <laughs> On how uh, former freedom, freedom, freedom fighters remembered the Reverend Pastor Matula, uh, Reverend Matula passed, as, as, as was said, uh, on, the, on the 17th of September 1980, at a recent occasion in 2019, marking the 16th June uh, uprising. The former teacher and freedom fighter, Wanyana Mazibugo, said that during his at Mother B, a prison. Reverend Castro Matura would pray very loud to the delight of other political prisoners and say, Tiko ga insa, Tiko ga mushwek, Tiko ga shaga, ayo mapun, not of the bure. Father Masibuka said that Castro Castro conscientized even uh, common law prisoners Politically, at Mother B prison, he left no stone uh, unturned. 
at another event in 2013, the to remember Reverend Mayatula's role in the fight for justice, freedom and equality, and democracy, and his role in liberation theology. Former Sasso leader, Professor Seth Cooper, said, uh, uh, quote, Mayatula, Mayatula's first love after his, his wife was a black Jesus Christ, close quote. In fact, as this woman is now on, and then Nemo remember this, there was a photo of black Jesus on the wall. He said that Mayatula, and the name Castro, because for him, Christ was a revolutionary and his mentor was Fidel Castro, Cuba's uh, former uh, president. He continued to say, Reverend uh, Castro Matula saw no difference in the ultimate teachings of Fidel Castro and that of Jesus Christ, close quote. Reverend Frank Chigano described Matula as a fearless activist who regarded Jesus Christ in liberation theology terms. Reverend Chigano also referred to Reverend Mayatula as a trailblazer because he was a member of the liberation movement and a leader of the church, a person of faith. Bishop Mbulona said, quote, Mayatula's spirituality was such that he was affectionately, affectionately called the Black Messiah. Uh, and Paradigm the of Order, former president of Sasso, said he met Castro when they were both arrested in Devon in 1974 at the Viva Fredimo rally to celebrate the Fredimo's uh, victory in, in Mozambique. Aubrey Mugwena said uh, Castro produced academics, politicians, and doctors, and that a foundation must be established in his name. Uh, speaker after speaker at this event, uh, noted that, that the former freedom fighters, for lack of a, a, a better expression, called for a creation of a foundation as part of remembering and honor, honoring not only Reverend Mashwabada, Victor Castro Mayatula, and all unsung heroes and heroines of the liberation struggle. They suggested that amongst other objectives, the foundation must promote principles that Reverend Mayatula and other freedom uh, fighters believe in. These uh, should include a question of justice, equality, freedom, human rights, and ethical values of Ubuntu unity, morality, faith, and of spirituality, as well as affirming and recognizing people who made a meaningful contribution and played a crucial role in our society. I am happy that the Castro and Monica Mayatula Foundation was finally established and registered in, the November, in November 2019 and was launched on the 28th uh, of, 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 of November 2020. Uh, the foundation has a vision of a nation, a nation with, 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 with the people who, who are empowered self-reliant, selfless, selfless, skilled, freed from corrupt practices, and with high ethical and, 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 and moral values. It plans to achieve this vision by contributing to some of, some of the sustainable development goals, such as quality uh, education, elimination of, of poverty, as well as to fight for gender equality and support community-driven development initiatives in historically disadvantaged areas such as Soweto, further it intends later on to move to Willow Valley in the Eastern Cape province and, and Rustenberg in North uh, West. Program director, the story of the struggle for human rights and non-racialism is a long and tortuous one. It, in, it involves many activists uh, from different uh, corners of uh, our country, the continent, and indeed the globe. Reverend Moshobada Mayatula was one of them. He, he fearlessly and inspirationally played his role, occupying the front lines. Program director, on the other hand, it is a matter of great significance that we celebrate the centenary of one of our pioneers for human rights, Reverend Castro Mayatula. 
during the human rights during the human rights month this is a fitting tribute his own struggle embodied the liberation of the mind of oppressed people it was a cause he would uh, not let up on until his death this year's human rights month is held under the theme the year of charlotte montague promoting human rights in the age of covid covid 19 it pays tribute to the 150th anniversary of the liberation struggle heroine and human rights campaign, Charlotte McClay. Her legacy as a leader in the service of, human, of, of, of humanity is a travis of, of community, community development uh, politics, women empowerment, education, and many other areas of leadership and endeavors. Her self-sacrifice should therefore inspire us to, to confront our current challenges, chief amongst them being the question of poverty, joblessness, and inequality. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic, which has gripped the country for 12 months now, has exacerbated the impact of these challenges. It has uh, revealed the pre-existing and deep fault, uh, fault lines caused by decades of deprivation for the majority of the people along, alongside decades of extreme wealth and, and, and privilege for a minority. Program director, on the other hand, 25 years since the adoption of the, of the constitution, it is very sad to witness the growing scourge of gender-based violence. Uh, this is a sh in sharp contrast. Uh, to the principles that Reverend Machula and other freedom fighters believed in and fought for, which include justice, equality, freedom, human rights, and the eth ethical values of Ubuntu, unity, morality, uh, and faith, uh, uh, and of spirituality. At the center of gender based violence are the unequal power relationship ostensibly, ostensibly perpetuated by backward practices whereby women are viewed as, as inferior to, to men. It is thus incumbent upon all of us to do all we can to destroy and eliminate gender-based violence and to save our boys and girls from this sadistic misguided uh, behavior. In the same breath, we must welcome the progress in the reduction of the backlog of gender-based uh, violence cases announced by the President of the Republic during the State of the Nation Address this year. It offers a glimmer of a hope, uh, but we must mercilessly attack the, be be the behavior itself. As you would know, the Constitution establishes the South African Hum Human Rights Commission, which is one of the state institutions supporting democracy. The aim is to promote respect of, for human rights and help build a culture of human rights, to promote the, 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 the protection, development, and attainment of, of, of human rights, and to monitor and assess observance of human rights in, in the Republic. It is thus important that we make use of this and other institutions that are created to support and strengthen our democracy, especially through the promotion and protection of, of human rights. On promoting non-racialism, non program director, South Africa would have progressed as a country beyond our imagination uh, were it not for the debilitating effect of centuries of colonialism and racial uh, policies. As a result, non-racialism has been at the center of the struggle against colonialism and apartheid. The governing party, the African National Congress, has a historical obligation to defeat racism in all its forms and to uphold non-racialism and non-racialism within its ranks and broader society. The ushering of democracy in 1994 saw the adoption of measures to, to promote non-racialism. The constitution put an end to unfair discrimination 
by direct or indirect means against anyone on one or more grounds, including, including race. Also, no person may discriminate directly or indirectly against anyone on one or more grounds that include race. The book, Fisher's Choice, A Life of Bram Fisher, written by Martin Meredith, chronicles the life of, of Abraham Bram Louis Fisher, who was born into a prominent African family. He studied law in South Africa and as a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford, as we know. He defended the, the, the accused at the prolonged prison trial of 1956 and led the defense team at 1964 the Bonner trial. Given his background, his father, uh, as we know, was the charge president of the then Orange Free State. And many would agree that Graham Fisher could have easily risen to the highest level of leadership in government. However, he chose the dangerous path of fighting racism. He was regarded as a, as a traitor by his fellow, by his, fe his fellow Africaners. After his death, his ashes were seized, and the apartheid government to date has failed to hand these to his family or to disclose their location. His life story was a direct response in support of aspirations of the Freedom Charter that, quote, the rights of the people shall be the same, regardless of race, color, or sex, those codes. Our constitution provides that legislative and other measures designed to protect or advance uh, persons or categories, categories of persons disadvantaged by unfair discrimination may be taken in order to promote the achievement of, of equality. The promotion of uh, equality and prevention of unfair discrimination act uh, four of 2000 as amended gives effect to the constitution so as to prevent and prohibit unfair discrimination and harassment to promote equality and eliminate unfair discrimination and to prevent and prohibit hate speech among other things. This was done in view of the fact that uh, the consolidation of democracy in our country requires the eradication of social and economic inequalities, especially those that are systemic in nature, which were, which were generated in our history by colonialism, apartheid, and patriarchy, and which brought pain and suffering to the great majority of our people. There is a, a growing debate about practical application of the concept of non-racialism. It is premised largely on the view that while it is easy to define non-racialism as a concept, it remains elusive in practice. Our approach to defeating racism must start with an understanding of what it entails. Racism has been described as prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism uh, directed against people of, of different color based on the belief that, belief that one's own race is superior. It is the belief that all members of each race uh, possess characteristics, abilities, or qualities specific to that race. As President Mandela once said, these are prejudices that are taught by society. He said, quote, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his or her skin or his background or his religion. Close quote. Unfortunately, we carry these prejudices with us. We allow them to influence our conduct in the different No, no sustain non-racialism. It is our individual and collective actions that will help exterminate ingrained impulses 
that are born out of racial and other form of, of prejudice. While we perhaps may have fewer races, it is true that given our past, they are power to stir hatred, hatred and, and, ra and rage is immeasurable. The nation's response to acts of racism demonstrate the unfinished business of, of, of healing. On the role of National Council of Provinces program director, our public representatives and, and, and public institutions are there to continue the work started by the likes of Reverend Matu, Ma, 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 Reverend Mayatula uh, Koza, sorry, Mayatula. The National Council of Provinces is one such institution which was established to ensure the link with uh, communities. 25 years ago, on the occasion of the adoption of the constitution of the Republic of South Africa, a global icon, President Nelson Kolitata Mandela had this to say uh, to the Constitutional, Constitutional Assembly about uh, its, 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 its establishment. Open quote, we were therefore able in the national interest to locate governing powers at the level where they appropriately, they appropriately belong and to ensure the national parliament is not an exclusive preserve of an imaginary national uh, politician, but the workplace in which representatives from all levels can pursue their, their mandate. Uh, uh, continue quote, through the Council of Provinces, the improvement of the status of local government and the style of government, governance based on transpa transparency, participation, and consultation, we shall ensure that democracy indeed constitutes government by the people, for the people, those quote. The constitution stipulates that the NCOP is there to represent the provinces, to ensure that provincial interests are taken into account in the national sphere of government. It does this mainly by participating participate, participate, and participating in the national legislative process and by providing a national forum for public consideration of issues affecting the provinces. Addressed by President Nelson Mandela on adoption of the new constitution, on 8 May 1996. Furthermore, the constitution enjoys the NCOP to provide for the participation of part-time representatives, not more than 10 in number, designated by organized local government to represent the different categories of uh, municipalities. The NCOP is thus a meeting point for the representatives of the three spheres of government. This places it at a vantage point when overseeing the observance and adherence to the constitutional principles of cooperative government and intergovernmental relations by all the spheres. Chapter three from director of the constitution states that all the spheres of government and all organs of state within each sphere must, amongst other things, cooperate with one another uh, and to coordinate uh, their actions. This is fundamental in achieving the lofty ideals of our constitution. In conclusion, program director, as we celebrate the year of Charlotte McCleck, we must recall our fallen uh, struggle leaders. Among them, Reverend Matula, who occupied the front lines in the fight for the restoration of, of dignity of the oppressed people in our land. Our constitution and the institutions, institutions it establishes give us the opportunity to continue their fight. I would like to thank you heartily, heartily for the opportunity to speak at this uh, evening webinar on the centenary uh, of my mentor, uh, Reverend Moshobada, Victor Kastumaya Tula. And on that note, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to speak on your platform. Thank you very much.
Thank you very, very much to the chairperson. Yes, we can clap hands. We can hear some hand clap. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chairperson of the NCOP for that inspiring, very much inspiring tribute to the late Reverend uh, Castro Mayatula. Thank you very much. Most, yes, but most importantly for, for sharing with us what our, you know, our government and our country has been doing to promote human rights um, as well as non-racialism. We sincerely thank you for sharing that with us, but we also thank you for sharing with us the role of the NCOP, the role of the public representatives at the NCOP level. Thank you ever so much, uh, Honorable Chairperson of the NCOP. We want to apologize for the noise, you know, and the disturbances on the side, but we commit that in future, we will really prevent that from happening. So at this point in time, we are then expected to have Miss Baby Penelope Gawa, who is the acting secretary of parliament so that uh, she can facilitate the questions and answer. So what we indicated at the beginning was that there is a chat box and that um, we, we request people who have a comment on the, on the input that we've just received from the chairperson of the NCOP should feel free to chat. So, so far I haven't seen any comment on the chat box. I think the only comment we, we, we had was from the people who were struggling to, to join the meeting, but uh, hopefully we have solved that problem. So people should feel free to, to send their messages on the chat box so that uh, the chairperson of the NCOP can then respond if their questions can respond to the questions, but comments are also allowed. May I check if uh, baby Penelope Gawa is here? Because I've checked the participants, I don't seem to see her name there. Good evening, uh, Nandi, oh, I am on okay. here. And um, my thank name you. is under my daughter's name, primarily because of connectivity. So you have to get the younger ones to assist you in such a case. And good evening to everybody, thanks. As um, Nandi has indicated, the platform is open for interaction and uh, for any questions. If you cannot, you can, you cannot use your video. You can actually write the chat on the chat group. I will read up some of the questions that have come and also comments. I think while still people, while people are still thinking, um, I do want to take this opportunity to thank um, Honorable uh, Masondo, um, also who is a mentor to a whole range of us, um, the class of 76, and also to say um, some of us as young persons from Soweto were quite lucky to have found such mentors and uh, Comrade Castro to a point where we hardly even thought that he is um, as, as old, um, but um, also gave, he gave us an opportunity to really interface with several cadres who were from the religious sector, um, priests, um, bishops who were supporting the struggle of non-racialism for South Africa. And um, I think um, um, Honorable Masondo has actually outlined, in fact, giving us a tapestry of the, the phases of struggle from, of course, the ANC, SASO, SASM, ZASO, BCP, and a whole range of <laughs> community organizations that emerged like Nyosanko. And uh, to say that in those years, it was unfashionable to be an activist, at least in Soweto and of course throughout the world, the country. But in fact, we are quite um, appreciative of the fact that there are people who can still reflect on his role and also assist us to understand why we have to protect the gains of democracy irrespective of the challenges, shall I say, notwithstanding 
the challenges we're facing as a country. Thank you so much. I'm just trying to check if there is anybody. Um, Pum says, no questions. Thanks for sharing such valuable information. What it means is the foundation has to document some of this information so that we are able to share it with the rest of the generations once we've gone from this mortal world. Nandi, I can't see any hands, um, but any comments would be There is a hand, Treasurer, from the chairperson of the board. Oh, Douglas. Okay, there, I'm, I'm scrolling up there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to echo uh, what, what Comrade Baby has said about the tapestry of history that was shared by, by Comrade Masondo. And uh, Nandi, you know, one of our objectives as a foundation is that uh, we would like as many contributors as possible who will contribute to the writing of the book about Ubabu Mayatula. And now tonight we've got a clear contributor. We've got a clear contributor in Comrade Amos because uh, he, he shared a life, very rich life with Baba Mayatula. So Comrade, Comrade Masondo will be approaching you very soon to put what we have said in writing and much more uh, that you could not say tonight about uh, Baba Mayatula because we have to document this history. Um, when some of us met Baba Mayotula, we were very young, we were teenagers. So we knew very little about what is happening. Uh, many of us are now in our late 50s and 60s. And uh, we need to document this history. And you are one of those who will really assist the Mayotula Foundation to document the history of what happened during those days and the role that Baba Mayatula played in the struggle. I, I just wanted to make that comment and say thank you very much, uh, Bob Masondo, for, for, for sharing uh, the life that you shared with Baba Mayatula. Thank you, baby. Thank you very much, to the Foundation. Any more comments? Chairperson and all members of the foundation. I uh, the Treasurer, excuse me, there, there is um, Ambassador Mtinso who's raised her hand. Oh, okay. I'm and and there, there, there is another chat, I think, on the chat box. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Ambassador Mtinso, over to you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, to the platform and the coordinator. I want to thank, uh, well, it's very difficult when you then talk about the national chairperson of the NCOP. If I just say Ambi, can we make that life for me? <laughs> A bit <laughs> easy. Ambi Tinje. Thank you very that's much to Ambi. And that's acceptable, Master. And then just call you all by name because I know I'm just next to Mayatula's age, you know. You know, uh, we used to call him. Uh, thank you very much for a very informative uh, a briefing, uh, 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 Comrade Andy. And I think that um, one of the points that I just wanted to make is that uh, this information is sitting with many of you. And I really congratulate the foundation for really trying to collect all this information wherever it is located because we don't tell our story. The story of South Africa and its freedom fighters is told by other people, not by those who were there and those who know directly what happened. The story that we're being told by Uambi just now is something that you are not going to find in our story books or whatever we call the history book or her story books. So I'm very happy about that. The second thing is that it's, I hope on this platform, there are a number of young people because also it is for them to, to learn the conditions under which those struggles were waged. And 
what has gone into really the South Africa that we have. It may not be the best, but it is in our hands, especially the hands of the youth to make it the best. It cannot be made the best by anybody else. There sometimes is a lot of criticism about what the elders uh, are doing or not doing. And I think that is a fair criticism, but I don't think we should be stuck there because the second criticism is the elders are not handing over the baton. So the young people get so much uh, concerned about this baton. And I think that uh, we are ready to hand over the baton, but the young people should actually show that the baton is not going to fall in their hands. And it's not about who's holding the baton or not holding the baton. The intergenerational is quite important because we all have a contribution to make. My last point is then a question to all of us. How do we ensure that our young people not only appreciate how this democracy was won, the sacrifices, but commit to enhance the democracy? It's not enough to just win it, but it's important to strengthen, protect and enhance it how do we ensure that this happens? Besides the kinds of things that we're already doing, I just as an elderly person are worried that I'm not finding that the, 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 the young generation, my grandchildren, I've got grandchildren who can't even speak my language. And then who say to me when I keep on telling them about this and that, Granny, what's the big deal? How do we make them understand that it is a big deal? the protection, the defense, and the enhancement of the human rights. Thank you very much for including me for this platform, rather not including me, for, for taking my question and for this platform. Congratulations on the foundation. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, um, Ambassador Mtinso, Mansis Tenji. Um, I've got two questions, so we will come back. I think the question from Comrade Sustenji is about maybe getting the young people on this platform to share with us on maybe even how do we make sure, how do they make sure that they have a role to protect, on, to protect our country's human rights? We'll get back to that one, but I want to take the two questions here. And the one is from Toko Mkwanazi Kaluba, who says, how do you think Reverend Castro Mayatula would have reacted to the current crisis facing higher education funding in the country? That's for you, Comrade Ami. The second question, how can we ensure that the people who are poor also enjoy human rights and no racism? I think those are directed to our guest lecturer. Um, Comrade Ambi, if you could respond to that. And the third question, I want to throw it at the young people who are on this platform. This is raised by um, Ambassador Comrade Tenji. Would Ambi, over to you. Um, if you can just repeat the, the question Maybe, again. We'll just, the first one says, and thanks for the informative session. How do you think Reverend Castro Mayatula would have reacted to the current crisis facing higher education funding in the country? That's the first one, um, Jefferson. Yes. The second one, must I go to the second one? Yeah. The second one says, how can we ensure that the people who are poor also enjoy human rights and not racism? Yeah. No, thank you very much, uh, 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 Honorable. Uh, <laughs> Uh, comrade uh, Penelope, uh, um, let, let, let me try and, 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 and <laughs> respond briefly. 
uh, as, as follows, as I'm sure uh, uh, Comrade uh, Mtinso, uh, as a veteran of the, of, 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 of the liberation struggle in general, uh, but a person who played a prominent role in the 70s in, in particular will also add uh, uh, her voice um, uh, on, 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 uh, on this debate and engagement. Now, on, on the question of, of, of funding, current uh, crisis of funding in, 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 in education, uh, I don't know, but uh, uh, I, I have a, a sense and, 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 and feeling that uh, much as the struggles of young people uh, uh, in the education front, uh, uh, are, are important uh, and, and they reflect uh, uh, part of the challenges uh, that, are, that are facing uh, us and the country as, 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 as a whole. Uh, there is something that I think uh, 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 young people should add as a dimension uh, to the analysis uh, and the kind of, 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 of action, therefore, that they take uh, uh, going forward. There's a sense that I'm, I'm, I'm getting that uh, younger people today are preoccupied, uh, uh, are also preoccupied, maybe that's not the only preoccupation, but they're also preoccupied with matters of self-interest. Um, uh, and they don't uh, spend enough and adequate time reflecting on, on the, uh, the, 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 the greater uh, picture. And that picture includes amongst others, uh, mobilizing young people uh, to make their energy, uh, to make their skills, uh, and, and the intellect available uh, to, 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 to address the plight uh, of, of, the, of the poor uh, and, 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 and ordinary uh, issues that, that, that ordinary people are, are grappling with on the, on, 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 on the ground. Uh, my sense is that uh, the self is, is pushed, put up front uh, and everything seems to, 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 to lag uh, behind. Uh, I think this criticism is fair. It, it is fair because uh, we, we will not have young people who have a higher consciousness. Uh, if, 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 if they, they are not called upon to make sacrifices for the good uh, of uh, the, the broader and, 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 and greater, greater society. Um, uh, no, young, no, no youth is organized on a global basis by getting them to look at the surface interest. Because if you, are, if you do that, you are setting them on the wrong path. Uh, uh, and, and what lies ahead uh, is destruction uh, and nothing, not, nothing else. Yes, the education problem remains an important problem. Um, uh, uh, but, but the context should always be the people. Anything that is not centered on the people uh, is on the wrong path. And it's unlikely to get us anywhere anytime soon. So the people justifies our existence um, uh, and, and the work that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. If the youth hardly ever does practical work, uh, uh, community work, uh, and, 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 and and so on, how will they, they get this consciousness? Because uh, the politics is not just theoretical. It also relates to the to questions uh, practical. 
Uh, so that, that will be my, 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 my response. I understand the problem, uh, uh, but I think that a lot needs to be done to criticize um, uh, anything that, that moves towards uh, 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 ensuring uh, the dominance of the, of, of, of the private and, 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 and narrow interest. On racism uh, uh, and, 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 hu and human rights, uh, uh, some people uh, may argue uh, 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 that issues of, of racism and human rights have nothing to do with uh, 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 practical day-to-day uh, -day life of people. Uh, and that this is a, a preoccupation uh, of, of, of intellectuals and, and those who are prone in that kind of uh, kind of 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 of, of, of direction, uh, uh, I, I, I want to differ uh, with that kind of, uh, of of an approach. I know it's my own construct, uh, but I want I want to differ with that that kind of uh, 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 approach, uh, and say that one only needs to look at where we come from to understand the centrality of addressing these questions. Uh, of course, I did speak about uh, economic issues and, and the importance of this in relation to, to, to human rights. Uh, but, but I think that it's, it's important to be uh, dismissive uh, of, 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 of these matters. For instance, there's so much just to learn uh, from the way uh, prominent leaders, such as uh, Brown Fisher, looked at the question of racism. Uh, and the kind of contribution uh, they made and the impact they had, not just on their generation, uh, but uh, uh, in, our, in, our, in our entire struggle and, and, and elsewhere in the, in, in, in the world. So the question of racism needs to be, need to be, need to be addressed, but to be, it must be addressed in a manner that is very practical, uh, uh, in a manner that, that, that does not give in uh, to narrow sense of uh, 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 parochial uh, Africanism, narrow uh, uh, Af 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 Africanism and so on. Uh, 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 that would be my, 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 my comment on that. And human rights remain important in South Africa. They remain important for many, many, many years to come. Uh, and, and, and the liberation movement must speak to this issue uh, and ensure that uh, there's general ed education and conscientization on, on these matters. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, um, Chair, for those uh, responses. Um, I'm wondering if the comment or the question as a comment um, raised by um, Ambassador Tenji, whether I should ask Palisa or Tiniko to to just share views on uh, the extent to which young people can or should be assisted to protect the human rights and the freedoms that, it, that have been attained by the generations and the guidance of um, Comrade Castro and amongst others, the young people that were mentored and guided by him and his teachings, of course, and his generation. I wonder if, um, Palisa, would you like to just comment or Tiniko? I just picked on you because I thought your face looked young. You want to comment? Anybody who would like to make to make a comment on, on the issues raised by Comrade Ambassador Tenji? Did you go? The chair has covered my question. Okay, fine. All right. You're happy with that. All right. Thank you so much.
All right, so let me ask, let me say we should move on now. Um, if there are any comments generally, please come up. Um, you can raise your hand or you can just jut in. We will allow you to before I hand over back to Nandi. And there's a hand, Duduzi, Comrade Dudu. And um, yeah, so you do, I'll take your first. You are in here. We can't hear you, too. Try something. Else. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair, and good evening to. Uh, you can't hear me. We can. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it better now? Yes. Do How is it now? You can. Yeah. Okay. No, thank you very much, Chair. In those that uh, are making the point, I would like to share in those that are making the point that uh, this kind of work, it's very much up as a uh, younger uh, generation to appreciate the contribution of those that uh, have really made it possible for us to enjoy what we call the fruit of freedom and democracy. And I think correctly so, Comrade Tenji, that uh, our task is to defend and advance the national democratic revolution so that the, the point that the time is raising of building a national democratic society can't just be left uh, from a point of view of being inspirational, but uh, in our day-to-day -day work, we work towards the realization of, those, of that goal. And, and the only way, until uh, 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 in as far as the terms of ethical leadership are concerned, because uh, I think happily today is that uh, the generation of uh, Comrade Castro would have stood and fought for <clears throat> on principle, but also fought on the basis of uh, <clears throat> an ethical leadership that uh, is committed to principle. Uh, so irrespective of the challenges that uh, are brought by uh, being responsible for state power and capital, we really need uh, to return and including not just building the, because I think the issue of institutions is very important that uh, even within the movement as a whole, we do need to work towards a, a, a situation where we are able to pinpoint that uh, this is where we will produce the next, uh, 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 the next Maya Tulas, the next, uh, amongst uh, 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 <clears throat> Masondos. And, and the only way to do so is to invest indeed in institutions. I think in, in cadreship development would be another important uh, across the movement uh, because I think even in, in institutions of higher learning, one thing that we are not doing very well is to preserve and promote the contribution collective of our memory, uh, because if we do not indeed generations that are coming might not know where we come from and therefore might commit similar mistakes that would have been committed in the past. Uh, so I think uh, in short, uh, we're very much uh, appreciative and I think uh, we need to work uh, towards uh, uh, the preservation and promotion of the heritage, uh, the rich heritage of those uh, 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 and all those that uh, came uh, before them uh, and those that were still contributing uh, towards uh, the realization of the uh, building of a national democratic uh, society. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, um, Comrade Drew, for that uh, comment and contribution. 
I think what you're reiterating is the capacity within us that um, would propel us to have such platforms, mobilize um, various platforms of interaction where we share such histories um, and indicate how they should be preserved. Um, on the other hand, we have to um, allow for engagements beyond just your, your social media and respect what we, we have attained without undermining or exaggerating the role that the young people should play today. Um, if I don't see any comments, um, I just want to possibly have my own reflections. I think to me, what is important is um, what Comrade Castro was able to do was to straddle the various, um, shall I say, perspectives of the struggle between Christian Institute, Azapo, COSAS, ANC Underground, PAC Underground. And even in that way, he was able to bring in a lot of unity of purpose amongst those who were pushing the frontiers, against the frontiers of, of colonialism and racism in the country. To me, it feels like very important that we start generating or appealing to our young people to, whilst indeed their agenda focused, or shall I say, item focused uh, on like high education struggles for finances, they should also be looking at how do we form relationships and alignment ally, alliances with other similar institutions that we can actually work together to really push on, exploit the policies and the programs and legislations that are passed under, apartheid, under a democratic institution in a democratic country and exploit those legislations that are coming out of our various institutions in the country and make sure that we make sure that they are implemented and they benefit us. On the other hand, it's about contributing and self-sacrifice because the generation of Comrade Castro and that of the 70s and the, the 80s, 60s even, um, had a lot of self-sacrifice um, and worked together to, for a common purpose. Non-racial is very important. Um, we must pursue inclusivity uh, with high integrity um, and dig into that history that would assist us to really make sure that the lessons learned of the past assist us to read and uh, present ourselves with integrity. Um, having said so, I can see the two hands, Ambassador Tenji and um, uh, Mr. Is it Kumbu Makutule. Let me uh, start with uh, Comrade Tenji, and then I'll come. And then Ambassador uh, Kumbu, you follow. Over to you. Uh, th thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Comrade Baby, for bringing me back. Um, I must apologize to the platform. I am in uh, in Spain. So when I get an opportunity to, to be a hagiolo, I, I get excited. So if I talk a lot, you must actually understand the good, just to khabul and you know, because calling you Spanish, man. So now having said that, <laughs> one of the things that is being uh, raised, this issue of racism, and I think that is something that is sitting with us. And we, we sometimes almost half-heartedly address it but then retreat. And I think that we've got to be aggressive against racism because that's what is taking us backward. This thing of the, uh, those ones that uh, Tabombeke would have referred to as in the first economy. And they want to hoard and isolate themselves as being in the first economy so that we cannot access as, as, as blacks in general and Africans in particular that first economy. So we've got to attack that. The second part is the question of uh, sexism. Not necessarily sexism, but the disempowerment of women or discrimination against women, which we should always, when we are talking as the progressive forces, we cannot, we cannot separate from the class, race, and gender because that tapestry of that colonialism in our country, because colonialism 
as it arrived in our country, it was also dragging its own patriarchy, which intersected with our own patriarchy, but also appropriated our own patriarchy. That we've got to make sure that consistently, and this is what Mamo Monica and uh, fighting priest would always uh, talk about, and they were always committed to. However, there's an element I just wanted to bring in, baby. We should be proud to be Africans, to be black and do everything and not be afraid of anybody. But we should also resist this temptation that each time something happens, before we look at why and how it is happening, we cry race. But particularly the women, when we sometimes go astray as women, as individuals, and we are being taken to task for our shortcomings or for our misdemeanors, we cry, you are doing this to me because I'm a woman. And I think that this is going to defeat our peoples. That thing of uh, abusing the question of gender and being feminine to then say that we must generally be protected when we do what is not correct. We should, especially the young women, they should be able to then say, I am going to fight with all my might against any form of patriarchy. But on the other hand, there are certain things that are not going to be said in my name, just because uh, people can use that as a matter of defense. I have just been observing that this comes out regularly when some of us are facing challenges, challenges that could be a man or a woman, but our defense was to say, because I'm a woman. So we've got to really be clear that we understand what is happening in our society and what roles we play in terms of defending our human rights, defending ourselves against racism, defending ourselves against a, a, a patriarchy, but on the other hand, not abusing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mam Tenji. Um, I'm going to allow- um, Hello. I'm not introduced. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening to all the participants. Um, for it's just a comment on my side. For those of us who were not fortunate enough to have met uh, Umfundisi Castro Maya Tula, this. I must say that this evening's seminar serves to inspire us a great deal. We are really much in inspired. And the legacy that is being told here tonight, uh, unfortunately, still needs to be documented and find other ways of preserving uh, Castro Maya Tula's legacy. I must add further that my concern though is one, because one of the ways of ensuring that we fight against forgetting, uh, particularly in the younger generation should continue to learn about the struggles that the generation before us waged. Uh, we normally would create monuments and rename some geographical spaces. I'm also concerned that Braambi mentioned the year of uh, Charlotte Matlake. I recently visited Cliptown as part of my work in the city of Johannesburg. Uh, you may know Che that the the house that Charlotte Matlake lived in in Cliptown is still there, but in a sorry state of decay neglected basically. This could be one of the ways that the government could be urged to recreate and revive that house because the provincial government did declare it a, a monument some, some time back, but it's in a state of neglect. So maybe to say 
as one way of contributing to the legacy of Castro Mayatula. Uh, how about uh, making a representation that the house in Sinawane becomes itself a national monument? Uh, that's a question. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for the contributions, colleagues, comrades, and the little ones that are peeping through the cameras of their dads, you're welcome. That's, those are the young people. Um, I wish to really thank everyone, each one of all of you for the time and engagement at this level and also affirm the education that we have received and revitalization of Mkhabulo as, as Mam Tenju was saying. And at this point in time, my work is ended. I'm going to hand over to the chairperson of the board, Mr. Ducky, Comrade Ducky, uh, Ramaphosa to take over and um, conclude the proceedings of the day. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Over to you, Chair. Oh, in fact, before the Chair, um, Treasurer of, of Treasurer of, of the of the board of the Mayatula Foundation, we would like to thank you very much and then ask Nomashubi Simamane who is one of the founder members. Just to conclude, you've done a bit of conclusion yourself, Treasurer, thank you so much. But thank you also to all the participants for the questions and the answers from the chairperson of the NCOP. Perhaps we should now hand over to Noma Shubi uh, before the, the chairperson of the board um, you know, closes. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Um, my name is Noma Shubi, Simamane, as uh, it has been said already. I've been asked, in fact, uh, I've been instructed by my younger sister to provide a vote of thanks. It should be the other way around. Um, let me start off by thanking the host, which is uh, Mr. Douglas Ramaphosa, who's the chair of the, of the board. And uh, we thank you, sir, for your leadership and for your enthusiasm to make sure that this foundation takes off. Um, I'd like to thank the board of directors, and um, I'd also like to thank the guest speaker, Honorable Babu Masondo, uh, Esimazi from very long ago, uh, who has reminded us about Udatu Castro Mayatula, the values he espoused, espoused and what he and his wife, Umonika, stood for. He also reminded us about the need for credible leadership and the consciousness to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong. And we know that that's something that's missing and lurking these days. Uh, we also want to thank uh, the officials from his office, the Office of the National Council of Provinces. Chairperson, they supported UNAND in terms of putting this together, so we're grateful. And if you can please share with them in terms of the, the expression of gratitude from our side. We'd like to thank faith leaders, Abefundisi Abakoyo, founder members, Ndimboluta Domnengukona, and then also the extended Mayachula family. I saw who, who put Andrew uh, from Rustin there, but I think he's just dropped off. Thank you so much for joining. General members of the foundation, family and friends of the foundation, the veterans, leaders of various political parties, business leaders, and traditional healers. Um, I also would like to thank all the people that have com com commented because they brought in some very useful wisdom and also put a challenge to us in terms of how we are going to make sure that we pass on the baton to the younger people who may not have full appreciation of where we come from as a country and what sacrifices had to be made to get us to where we are today. I also would like to thank uh, Baby Kiawa for hosting the questions and, and the comments that were passed through. But most importantly, you've done the job of summarizing as well as offering your own reflection. So that should not be uh, repeated. Uh, Ambassador Tenji and uh, Kakulu for reminding us to tell our stories. How do we share how the democracy was achieved with the younger generation? Uh, I'm sure there's somebody I'm going to miss out and I apologize. Thank you so much for all the inputs. And finally, I'd like to thank my sister Unandi, uh, who's working very hard to make sure that this uh, foundation takes off and her tenacity to keep on keeping on with the support of the board and a very uh, agreeable board in terms of proposals that are put forward. Um, I was asked to offer a prayer. I'm not sure whether this is the time to do that or 
do I allow the chairman to, to speak first? No, this is, this is the right time. Please do so. The chairman has got nothing else to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Can you then uh, uh, close with a prayer? Um, we thank God for the blessing of life and that we're still six foot above ground when people are falling around us. We express gratitude for the blessings of good health. We commit to staying safe. God, our almighty and eternal father, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life. Hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. May they be an eternal reminder of how to live our lives, taking into account the values they espoused and what the foundation seeks to achieve, which is we dream of a nation with people who are empowered, self-reliant, free from co corruption, and with high morals and ethical values. We remain hopeful and are keeping the faith that in your name, God, this shall be achieved through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I think we are Amen. done. Thank you so, so much to everybody. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Program yeah. Director. Thank you. Have a wonderful Thank you. evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, CC. Bless you. Bye. 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 Monwen. Hi, Hello, put Andrew. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the message. You're welcome. Uh, um, to do so must be told uh, he can't represent young people anymore. Because <laughs> so he's, he's over 35. Okay? He's over 45. <laughs> <laughs> don't start, don't start oh, with that. Oh, thank you, Sister Angie. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Nandi. Because it's a Spain. I can't hold your mind. So you can't hold your mind. conference. Eh, uh, yo. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us all the way from Spain, Sister Angie. Hey, and, and it's called no. Spain. Yo, <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for everything. And course, I'm closing the, the meeting right, now. I'm ending the meeting. And course, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Put Andrew. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>